Hello again, everybody. It's me, Madame McCub, and it is time for another story time. So I'm sure all of you who have already had your first job have all sorts of interesting stories, both great and not so great. I was fortunate enough in that my first job was actually pretty nice, but oh, oh, it did have its bad moments. See, my first job was to be a waitress in the fancy dining hall of kind of an upper-class retirement community. Yes, serving food to rich old people. You can see how that could lead to some stress. But for the most part, it really wasn't that bad. Lots of really interesting people with some great wisdom and stories to impart. But oh, heaven help you if you got their orders wrong. Let me tell you, working as a server is no easy business to begin with. People can suck. They really can. But old rich people with very particular ways they like to have their things served exactly as such, that can lead to some bad times. Excuse me, miss. There are not enough raisins in my raisin bran. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I'm not allowed to dig through the box and pick them out, but I, I could go get you a tray of regular raisins and you could add as many as you like. No. They have to be raisin bran raisins. Um... I can go ask the chef, I'll be right back. You go back to the kitchen, you ask the chef, Hey, he wants specific Raisin Bran raisins, what do I do? Just give him a cup of regular raisins and tell him that you took them from the box. But isn't that lying? Just do it. And you feel a little bad for being dishonest? But it works, you tell him it's from the box and he's happy, it's a win-win. But those were just your normal Georges and Peggy's. You know, the raisin connoisseurs. A little bit picky in some aspects, but otherwise a joy to work with. And it was really fun when you'd get the ones whose filters stopped working because they got to a certain age. You know, the ones who just didn't have a care to give anymore and would practically shout stories and conversations that were totally not dinner appropriate all the way across the dinner hall. Oh, fun times. Back when I was a field nurse, I saw some terrible things. I'd say the worst I ever saw was some poor boy, no older than 20. You know what happened to him? He got his willy shot clean off! Aggie, Aggie, this may not be the best time to shout your conversation across the hall. People are staring. Shot clean off! Gone! There was nothing there. You could see. Okay, Aggie, I gotta go check on the orders. I'll be right back. You run while you can, and you can just see the looks of horror of everyone else around her table you've left behind. Oh, to be so old and to just not care. You wouldn't believe how many horribly morbid, yet still fascinating stories I heard while working there. But today's story is revolving around one particular resident, Miss Bertha. Oh, I can picture her now, buzzing across the hall in her electric scooter, wearing a scowl that would frighten grown men. See, the dining hall had no assigned seating. It was first come, first serve, or if somebody made a reservation. Well, Bertha never made a reservation, but Bertha had a specific seat at a specific table she would sit at every meal. Now, the higher-ups would tell us it was because she was a resident that has been there for quite a while, so she got seniority there. But then your more direct staff mates would tell you that there have been people there longer than her, just nobody was brave enough to say anything to her, so she got to sit at that table and chair. See, I had never had to serve Bertha before, because it was always my manager who always dealt with her. He was frightened of her too, but they had built up a shaky rapport in that she trusted him to serve her, and she was always hypercritical, but never straight up nasty to him. It worked. Well, that day, he had called in sick, and I was the unfortunate one that got the short straw in that I was assigned to his section. And believe me, I was terrified. I'd seen what she'd done to people before. The poor girl who used to have the section next to mine had to fill in for another sick night one time, and Bertha emotionally frightened her so deeply she quit the next day. So I began silently counting down to my own obliteration as I served the tables, getting closer and closer to Bertha's. Finally, my clock hit zero, and I stepped up to the plate. You're not Andrew. He's actually sick today, but I'm more than happy to fill in as your server. I want exactly six ice cubes in my water, and I want a slice of lemon. And so help me if there is a seed in that lemon. Oh dear lord, was I terrified at this point. She was eyeballing me like a hungry hyena at a carcass. He here's your water. 
This will do. I could have cried from relief. I don't know what it was about this old lady that made her so intimidating, but she was terrifying. So she continued to give me her order, which I was thankfully able to get back to her exactly to her specifications. Still, not even the faintest trace of a smile or warmth from her cold, cold eyes. But I was still in one piece. I thought I had made it through the trials of fire. I was about to leave the table and go on to live another day when she called me back for one more thing. Ah yes, before you go, bring me a cup of coffee. Any cream or sugar? No, no, just black. Though I don't know why I bother. The coffee they serve here is nectar for honeybirds. Why they even bother calling it coffee is beyond me. It's just tinted water. Now, to a fair extent, she did sort of have a point. The coffee that we kept in the dining hall for the residents was pretty weak. See, it was a lot easier to just have a weak, weak coffee there, seeing as when you get to be a certain age, there are a lot of caffeine restrictions, and it was one of those cut and corner type of things. It may not necessarily have been right, but it was easier for the staff, so they just served out the weak coffee to everybody, rather than having to specifically hunt down charts and find who can't have what, since a lot of the workers there were junior high and high school students. Good luck trusting them with a chart. Though we did have those charts available to us in the dietary hall, and I had seen the one for Bertha because I had been studying like an exam when I knew I was gonna cover her table. And she didn't have any caffeine restrictions or anything that would keep her from being able to have proper coffee. So without thinking, I just sort of blurted out. If you like strong coffee, we always have some that's super dark back in the break room. I think I could get you some of that. Oh no. Oh no, what have I done? Her face sort of rose up in contemplation, and then, when I was nearly ready to pass out from fear, I saw what appeared to be the first signs of softness creep onto her face for the entire night. You could do that. Yeah, I'll be right back. So I ran back into the kitchen and shot into the break room where we had this giant coffee pot thing. It's one of those industrial ones that you can put on in the morning and leave on all day until it is like mud. And let me tell you, it was always like mud because our head chef loved himself a cup of dark coffee. That stuff was darker than the pits of Hades. So maybe it'll work for an old lady who likes her some strong coffee. I had grabbed one of the mugs on the way through the kitchen and I filled that bad boy up. And then I ran out as quickly and discreetly as I could back out to the dining hall and to Bertha's table. I presented her the mug and shakily handed it over. She grasped it and then she lifted it to her nose to sniff it. And she must have found nothing offensive because she took a sip. Then for the first time in my entire career at that place, she smiled. From that moment on, the rest of the night was a breeze. I had magically gone from this nervous little plaything to her new favorite person in the entire building. Mind you, this wasn't a 180 in her behavior. She's still terrified and was pretty nasty to everybody else in the building. But whenever I came in, I got a big ol' smile and wave because she knew that a proper cup of coffee was awaiting her. I don't think there was anything against policy in giving her that darker coffee, especially considering she had no conditions that would make it otherwise but I never actually told anybody because I was young and I was afraid that I might be crossing a line and it might get me in trouble. So that secret stayed between me and Bertha. But the entire rest of the time working there, she was a joy to serve. She actually requested that I become her normal server and we got pretty close. She had tons of crazy stories and actually had a pretty witty sense of humor. She even got me a card when I was quitting my job. Now that was kind of against policy and she wasn't supposed to, but she slipped it to me and told me not to open it until I got home. And when I got home and opened it, out fell a hundred dollar bill. Bertha, you sly devil. So the moral of the story is, when life throws you a terrifying old lady, give her a cup of tar coffee? No, that's not right. Sometimes people hide behind hardened exteriors because they've endured a lot of hardships in life. And if you can work your way through that wall, you may find that they're incredible people. I don't know. I'm not too good at this stuff. You can find a moral in there somewhere. Anyways, that's all the story time I've got for you guys today. 
So what about you? You have any crazy first job stories? If you do, share them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. Thanks for watching. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will catch you all next time. Bye bye for now. If there are lemons, so help me. <laughs>